on an analog phone, such as residential corded and cordless phones you can buy today, caller ID and the turning on and off of the voicemail waiting indicator is transmitted to a phone using special tones called frequency shift keying, or FSK. To hear what these tones sound like, we need a device that lets us hear the line without taking the line off hook. As it turns out, you can do this with any Panasonic automated call block phone, with automated call block turned on and answering a call from a number or number prefix stored on the call block list. So to do this, we're going to simulate a call coming from area code 712, which I have blocked. And this area code is for the state of Idaho. And it's a very common area code for scam calls, apparently. Hello. You can see the entry here on this handset. With 555 as the as the middle three digits of the number because I don't want to show any real numbers. 555 as the central exchange as those three digits are called is often used in TV shows, movies, or other cases where you want the format of a real phone number without actually showing a real phone number. Now, to make this easier, we're going to switch my wiring so that I only have this phone, the Panasonic KXTG994SK, plugged into my line. First up, caller ID. So now I'm going to call from my other extension, and then you'll hear the caller ID as it comes in. Nope, that didn't work. Apparently, when I switched the lines around, it still thinks that... Oh, nope, I called the wrong extension. That's what happened. Those tones you just heard are the FSK tones that make up the name Cockpit Line. That's what I call the other line. And the number 2022. So I have a four-digit extension number for every device on my free PBX system. Now, let's have a call going. And then we'll hear the call waiting caller ID. To do this, we need to plug the other phones back in. But this first demonstration of caller ID for an incoming call was the only one where I absolutely had to disconnect the other phones so that we could hear just the caller ID tones and not the phones ringing. But for everything else, the phones don't ring, so we can plug them in. To demonstrate call waiting, I'm going to call the echo test using the 885SK. We'll mute it. And now we're going to put it on hold. This way, we have an off-hook line that is now ready to receive call waiting caller ID. So call waiting is that beep tone that you hear on the phone when you get a call waiting call. The beep is the call waiting tone, and the high pitch beep is what's called the customer premises equipment alert signal. This tone tells the phone or device on your line that it can play a DTMF D tone. The DTMF tones A, B, C, and D are special tones used in signaling and are not commonly seen on a telephone keypad. But on keypads that do have them, A would be next to the free key. B would be next to the 6 key, C would be next to the 9 key, and D would be next to the pound key. So, 
So let's say this keypad here is one of those special keypads. The top row would be 1, 2, 3, A. Then the next row, 4, 5, 6, B. 7, 8, 9, C. Star 0, pound, D. So the phone playing the DTMF tone D tells the provider or device, in this case my Grandstream ATA, that it can now transmit caller ID to the phone. So now we're going to, from my other extension, again, call the main line extension. That is what caller ID sounds like. And it, of course, echoed because I was on the echo test. Now, if I had a phone that does not have caller ID off hook, I would have only heard up to the, the customer premises equipment alert signal. Now we're going to do this again, but this time we're going to pick up this AT&T 213, which does not have caller ID. And now we're going to take this phone back on hook and we'll do this again. So now let's take a listen to the 213 as I now make a call here. Actually, we don't even need a phone in this line monitoring glitch state to demonstrate a call waiting caller ID tone. Since this phone does not have caller ID because it's just a basic slim line phone without a display or any use for caller ID, it does not mask out the caller ID FSK tones. So what normally happens when a call waiting call comes in is you'll hear the call waiting tone and the CPE tone. But you can hear that we only got a bit of that caller ID tone at the end, and then that was then echoed back through the echo test. And this, I believe, is intentional, so that if you're on the phone, you don't hear a noise that you might not be familiar with. Because to the average user, the caller ID call waiting FSK tone is just a bunch of random noise and it might make you go, what in the world is that strange sound I just heard? But this is actually the sound of call waiting caller ID data. Now we're going to do this again. We're going to mute both of these phones. And let's once again take a listen to the AT&T phone as the call comes in. So we clearly heard the FSK tone on the 213. While the 994SK masked out the FSK tone. Phones without caller ID are not designed with any caller ID stuff in mind. Now let's demonstrate voicemail on off FSK. This is the signal that turns on or off a phone's message waiting indicator. So what we just heard here on the 994SK is that phone picking up the line, actually it was the 9582 that picked up the line. What it was doing there is it was listening to see if there was a stuttered dial tone, which is another way you can know you have new voicemail. Certain phones, like these Panasonic ones, can listen for those tones by going off hook briefly, and then if it hears a stutter dial tone, it turns on the voicemail waiting indicator. And that's why in my phone's ringing video, I had to wait a few seconds, a second or so, before hanging up the cockpit line to make it ring. Because if the phone was going off hook to check for the stutter dial tone, it interferes with the extension's ability to ring. So in some cases, 
the call would just slip over to my extension's voicemail. So now I'm going to hang up, and this will save this message I've just been recording into extension 2023, my main line extension. And we'll get to hear the tone. Now I'm going to call into my voicemail, which I've programmed to be star 99 instead of star 97 for consistency with Xfinity, which is the provider that we use. So that's the stutter dial tone that the phone listens for. And what happens is the phone, the these Panasonic phones hang up after only a split second of hearing the tone. Because it's pretty sure that if it hears a stutter dial tone, that it is a stutter dial tone, so it doesn't need to listen any longer. So now I'm going to take the 9582 on, or off hook, then on hook. And now it's going to do the voicemail tone detection by going off hook. Like that. So now we've gotten the indicator that way. Now we're going to play the message and we'll hear the tone that it'll do when the message is deleted or we've listened to it to make it old. Press. Now, if we take a look at this phone, you can see that the new voicemail indicator has gone away. There are drawbacks to both these voicemail detection methods. For a phone that is detecting the voicemail indicator on-off FSK tone, and these are two separate tones, one turns it on, one turns it off, but they're barely distinguishable from one another. So if a phone is listening for those tones, but you have another phone on the line that is going off hook to listen for the stutter dial tone or lack thereof at the same time, this interferes with, this interrupts the FSK tone. So this may result in some phones still indicating it. In that case, you would use the phone's voicemail indicator clearing method. On the other hand, phones that only listen for the FSK tones will not bring back the indicator if, for example, you have a message, you cleared the indicator using the reset option, and then there is still that new message. For example, you went off hook and then back on hook. Or if you play your messages and the phone was not connected to the line, the phone would never get the tone to turn the indicator off. And for a phone that's not programmed to listen for a stutter dial tone, turning the phone on and off will not force the indicator to go away. So this is why there's an option on many phones to clear the voicemail indicator. On Panasonic, on most Panasonic phones, that is holding the pound key for a few seconds. On models before 2010, that is holding the off button for a few seconds. On AT&T, VTech, and Yen phones, it's an option in the menu. And on my Motorola L402C, that's an option in the menu as well. 